Welcome to Sacred Cow Shipyards, where no ship is safe from being called a cow. As regular viewers of this channel might know, this is, in fact, a minivan appreciation channel. We do, in fact, love Star Trek shuttlecraft. We do, in fact, love the ISSCV from a Space Above and Beyond. We love all kinds of transport vehicles, because... After all, an army runs on its stomach, and the only thing that runs a stomach around in space environments is, well, a transport. And I do understand that the concept of a minivan on your planet is quite complicated, and maybe I'm stressing the term, because after all, an ISSCV might be more analogous to, say, a panel van as opposed to a minivan. But the analogy still basically applies. And either way, here I am staring another minivan, another space minivan, another science fiction minivan in its cockpit, and I'm not happy. And like I said, since this is, in fact, a minivan appreciation channel, you have to understand how me not being happy is kind of a problem. And I very much want to preface this conversation by acknowledging that Gojira is a very important uh, character, entity, monster for a lot of y'all. I mean, the movies have been around for, what, 70 years, give or take? And only now he's being recognized as the awesomeness that he is? Let's, let's be honest here, it's kind of ridiculous. But unfortunately, in this context, that is uh, a little besides the point. In this particular context, we are specifically focusing our attention on the uh, movie called Godzilla vs. Kong. I don't know actually how this actually happened. Well, no, I guess that's technically wrong. Apparently, this is the fourth film in the MonsterVerse. Also the 36th film in the Godzilla franchise, also the 12th film in the King Kong franchise, and also still somehow the fourth Godzilla film to be completely produced by an American film studio. So that's how it happened. But anyways, we're not actually here to talk about the uh, videos themselves, the movies themselves, that is to say. We are instead here to talk about the aptly named Heave. Yeah. What a wonderful name for a ship, don't you agree? Apparently it's an acronym. It stands for the Hollow Earth Aerial Vehicle. Right about now, you're probably asking yourself, what the hell is the Hollow Earth? At least you're asking yourself that if you're not a student of humanity's, you know, appreciation for conspiracy theories and the like. There was a certain gentleman in the 17th century on your planet by the name of Edmund Holley. He was apparently the second astronomer royal in once Great Britain, succeeding John Flamsteed. So, supposedly, he was a scientist, and supposedly he might know what he was talking about. But one of his many theories along the years was that the Earth was actually, literally, hollow. Now, he wasn't technically the first person to come up with this idea. He was simply the first person to write it down. And he did actually have some sort of scientific, uh, you know, notion behind the, uh, the, the, the notion, I guess. Apparently, at the time, he was confused by anomalous compass readings around the globe and came up with this, like, Matryoshka doll idea of the Earth as an explanation of why the, the magnetic field might be doing what they expected it to be doing. Naturally, this turned out to be wrong. The Hollow Earth theory was disproven fairly conclusively by the Shihalian experiment mere decades after said theory was initially proposed, and all other information that y'all humies have gathered about your planet ever since merely sim seems to prove the point that no, your planet is obviously not hollow. But as all these things tend to do in your species, the idea kinda hug around. And as these crazy ideas you humies occasionally have tend to do, it came up in movies, most notably, as we are talking about right now, Godzilla vs. Kong. You see, apparently, the place that all these titans, like Godzilla and Kong and all the rest of them, have been hanging out, and in fact, possibly where they possibly, possibly came from, is in fact, an inner layer to your planet. 
where the roof is planet, the floor is planet. I'm not really sure what produces light down there. It's kind of like a, another planet inside of your planet after a certain distance from the crust or something. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's, it's once again a nested theory concept, as opposed to just exclusively hollow. But for reasons that make absolutely no sense at all, getting there is quite challenging. I mean, you would think you would just drill a hole and, you know, go through the hole and suddenly you're inside the earth and everything's fine. But no, the movie comes up with this whole crazy notion of massive and violent gravitational reversal effects that you find in the, in the paths down to the hollow earth. Again, for reasons. And all previous attempts of uh, plumbing the depths of the hollow earth have, have resulted in the entire death, fatality, and absolute mutilation of the people who made the attempts, no matter what kind of vehicle they used. And thus... Apex Cybernetics would provide the world the heave. Apparently, this thing packs a power source that's sufficient to light up the whole of Las Vegas for a week, which is pretty significant, and I have no idea where the hell they put it inside the craft. But also, possibly more importantly, it has some sort of gravitic drive system which allows it to bypass or at least slip through the gravitational storm that is the interface between your world and the hollow Earth. And, of course, that's where this whole darn thing falls apart. For all we can tell, the Heave does in fact have four drive pods of some sort, and they are articulated. They rotate about their, uh, I guess it's the Y-axis, so they can point down, up, backwards, and forwards, depending on which way the ship is moving. Or at least, so you would think. It is entirely natural to assume that the direction these pods are pointing is the direction they are applying force. So, I mean, that's pretty much the kind of idea that you've been trained on for, you know, decades. Well, the first problem is that the forward pair of pods is obstructed by the rear pair of pods. So whatever force they are generating, it would be pushing on the rear pod. Now, admittedly, these are gravitic drives, so theoretically they might be pushing against the gravity field of your planet instead of, uh, you know, the air or whatever else they might be pushing against until you see the little ship go into, like, super cruise mode and suddenly there's some sort of a mission coming out of the back pods. And okay, fine, maybe the front pods are meant for keeping the craft in the air, and the back pods are used for its actual forward motive force. That could make a certain degree of sense, right? Until you realize that those weird emissions come out of the back pods, no matter if they're facing rearward or frontwards. Like, seriously, what's causing that? That's not contrails, that's not exhaust, it's really unclear what the hell that is. And it's really unclear what the pods are actually doing. The only time they are consistently pointed in any particular direction is when the heaves are taking off or landing. Then they are typically pointed down, so they can also double as the actual landing gear. It's unclear as to whether or not they're actually, like, providing force in those kind of directions. They just land on their feet that way. Because otherwise, sometimes the rear pods are facing aft, sometimes they're facing forward. And it's really inconsistent and absolutely ridiculous. A similar point where the art department clearly lost the bubble are the two very large circles on either side of the heave. Again, it is terribly unclear what they are, but they are recessed, illuminated circles. Obviously, they're probably just for the greebling, and to have something on that smooth surface between the two engine pods. And after all, it has to be a smooth surface, because that's where the engine pods rotate through, and they wouldn't be able to rotate over something, right? Right? Ah, damn it. Well, apparently the space between the two pods at some point massively increased, and those two rings pop out of the sides of the ship. Why? Unclear. Never explained. Are they escape pods? Are they the, the rotary starters for the gravitic drives that are currently offline while the heave falls out of the, well, not technically sky, but falls to its inevitable doom inside of the hollow earth? No one knows. Now, of course, the engines do, of course, start back up again, and then you obviously, again, have the emissions coming out of them, despite it being some sort of gravitic drive. It's like they couldn't make up their minds whether they wanted vector jets or actual, like, bubble transport systems, and kind of crossed the streams and came up with the worst possible options for both. But okay, fine. The engines don't make a whole lot of sense, because y'all just hand-wave gravitic technology, and that's just pretty much the end of it. And the weird little circle things also don't make sense. Fine, the art department dropped the ball, whatever, move on. These things are clearly big enough that they can carry a lot of people and a lot of equipment, right? Right? No. Yeah, they have the seating capacity for four, including two flight crew, and then enough space for some random little droid. And that's literally 
it. I mean, they've got actually a pretty big space behind those seats because the cockpit's so far forward and the, it, that width of the space continues all the way back to the ramp at the stern. They just don't put anything in there for reasons. I guess the budget ran out or something. Like, honestly, it's not even clear that there are, like, bench seats back there or anything at all back there. There could be just a massive void back there and we wouldn't even know because the movie doesn't care about it. The movie cares about the cockpit area, which, as I mentioned, only seats four people. And the movie cares about the ramp at the stern, which I guess seats no people, but is still the ingress and egress aspect of the actual, you know, pod thing. All right, fine, 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 fine. This thing has clearly failed the minivan test of Sacred Cow Shipyards, for what little that might be worth. Because, I mean, Sacred Cow Shipyards does not actually operate minivans, so that's a whole separate conversation in and of itself that we're not going to have right now. Instead, what we're going to talk about, of course, is weapons! Because, of course, this is a gravitically driven vehicle, that has gravitic drive, as I keep saying, and does all kinds of things necessary to get into the uh, the hollow earth environment and has, I guess, energy shields of some sort to protect itself from the hollow earth to main earth transition boundary area. And I mean, honestly, it has the power output sufficient to power Las Vegas for a week. It's got to have some pretty awesome weapons, right? 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 Oh, f***. The reality is that this poor thing's primary armaments consist of two chain guns or autocannons or however you want to phrase it. They are a belt-fed, slug-throwing weapon that has no significant augments by way of the gravitic drive system. I mean, honestly, you have a gravitic drive right behind you. Why wouldn't you be augmenting your weapons by way of, you know, that? Make them move faster. Make them, well, mostly move faster. That's what gravitic drive does. But apparently that's just too complicated for some reason. But I guess I should be fair in some regard, because apparently the Heaves have a 16 and another 12 pack built in over their engines somewhere. It's really not clear where those warheads are actually installed. But regardless... Somewhere on the heaves, there is a 16-pack missile launcher and a 12-pack missile launcher, the 12 right on top of the 16. And they do what is commonly referred to as a Maycross Missile Massacre. This is actually something that the producers of the uh, Godzilla vs. Kong movie actually called out as one of the motivations for their movie. You see, uh, this whole Maycross uh, TV series has this idea of just absolutely spam canning missiles missiles everywhere missiles anywhere that they're not missiles they're just missiles all the places there was a firefight and for whatever reason the designers behind the uh, heave and godzilla versus kong uh, decided that the maycross missile massacre was going to be a feature it wasn't really a massacre I mean, there were a lot of missiles in the air, but it didn't really rise to the level of, you know, a massacre, which I guess is actually the problem with this whole vehicle. It didn't rise to the level of anything. I mean, seriously, this was the vehicle that was the portable ambulatory AED for King Kong himself. Someone planted one of these vehicles on his chest, set it to overload, and somehow that overload shocked King king khan's heart back into rhythm or something i it doesn't make any sense why what I, I, what but see this, this 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 right there is why science fiction or at least science fiction adjacent tv series movies whatever the hell you want shouldn't pretend that they're trying to be science fiction make it just Make make the heave vehicle just, you know, a smooth, like, uh, I don't know, a pumpkin seed shaped vehicle with no obvious mechanics built into it at all. And it does what it needs to do and it does everything it needs to do. And that's fine. Trying to pretend that you know what you're talking about is not going to work, y'all. It is absolutely clear that you genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. 
the whole vector thrust thing doesn't work when they overlap. When, when the forward pod literally drives its thrust into the stern pod. You know what that does? Nothing. Actually, it does worse than nothing because it damages their stern pod. Why? I, I, what? I, but why, though? And then the whole, like, jump starting King Kong's heart? Well, I guess, theoretically, if you overloaded a gravitic drive system hard enough, that it would deliver one solid CPR stroke to this massive freaking ape. And I guess if that one singular solid stroke was enough to, you know, kick his heart over again, then it might actually work. But otherwise, are you f***ing kidding me? I mean, the fundamental reality is that I would be out of a job if y'all actually managed to listen to me, and apparently no one is interested in doing that, so I feel safe in my current position. But still, the he from Godzilla vs. Kong is absolutely ridiculous, and I am very sad to say that it simply only gets worse with Godzilla X Kong. What, what, what does the X actually mean here? Regardless, there is an upcoming movie, or there was an upcoming movie that was released this weekend on your planet called Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire. And from the trailers alone, the heaves that they're using in that series, movie, whatever, are just like, all right, it's clear that y'all leaned into the Maycross aspect. That's fine. But um, can we stop trying? Can we stop pretending? Can we stop believing that any of this makes any sense anymore? Because now you've just gone entirely off the reservation and you might as well just lean into it. Okay. Can you, can you at least be honest and just lean into it, please? Let, let, let's do that, okay? And, and just go with it, okay? And that's all from Sacred Cow Shipyards. Please be advised that any ship left on the docks for more than 24 hours will be compressed to a cube at the owner's expense. Have a nice day.